So I will let Dennis know when I get back that Republicans and Democrats in New Hampshire agree with me. <laughs> how, about, how about if you say right now that you want two trillion cut by Christmas? I would, I, I, well, I'll say that. <laughs> I, I, would, I would like, look, I, this, this out year business, this baseline budgeting is three quarters of the problem. So, okay, let me, let me sort of, let me talk about this a little bit. Um, so you're talking about two trillion in this fiscal year, not, not two trillion. I'm talking year. about we got this much of a problem, yeah. and the debt bill that we just cranked out takes that much of a nibble of it, and lets other Congresses really do it. Yeah. The so the, you're you're pretty much correct. The one control in this bill that will be very difficult for future Congresses to undo are the future caps on spending. There are caps, those are very difficult uh, to actually pass. I don't think it's ever happened since World War II. And it's very difficult to, to remove them. Uh, and there was a bipartisan support, uh, vote to put those caps in. The frustration I've heard as well, there's only 21 billion in year one, which is true. On the discretionary side, it goes up to about 48 billion in year two, and so on and so forth, and it accumulates to 917 uh, billion. And the president is then allowed to Increase the debt uh, ceiling by 900 in that first in that first phase. So I have heard the statement that well, you know, spending is is continues to, to increase and we're not cutting spending. Well, spending continues to increase because we only are addressing one side of the budget. We're only addressing discretionary. That is actually being cut on the discretionary side, and then the cap. The next 10 years, you won't see. 2010 spending levels on the discretionary side uh, uh, for 10 years. What, what is allowing the entire budget to increase, to grow, is the rest of the budget that we have not addressed, the, the mandatory. Until we address and come to an agreement on the mandatory, you will not see what you just asked. So what about. happens if the House listens to these 12 and votes no? Do not if, increase okay, the so we, again. It, the, the 12 by Thanksgiving have to come to an agreement. In order for them to come to an agreement, at least seven have to say yes. If seven say yes, automatically that bill, uh, that agreement becomes a bill, goes to the House, goes to the Senate. But it's only still doing the discretionary side. Well, we don't know that. Actually, to be determined, the, the President of the United States well, let's yesterday. say you're presented with something in the next few months and the something does not cut enough in your opinion. Why don't you stand up on your feet like you did with Libya and say, I'm voting against it, and well, I mean, the rest of the House follow you I, I may. I very well may. throw us right back to August 1st. I, 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 don't I, care. I, very, I very well may. Uh, I mean, I have to see what they come up with. But it's going to be very difficult for this group not to address either entitlement reform and or tax reform. It's going to be very difficult. So, the, well, we the, have to, or well, I think we have to. Yeah, I think. I, I mean, as a country, we've got to. We've got to. We've got to come. First of all, as a country, I'm not sure as a country, we all agree yet that we have to. The first step here is to make sure that the country understands, uh, and at least acknowledges, not understands, but acknowledges that you can't ignore a, a large portion of the budget. We've got it and now. There are going to be some who say raise taxes. There's going to be some that say you know manage it through uh, cuts. I, I think you can grow our economy. I think you can be a limited, effective, efficient economy. You got to be focused like a laser on uh, the oversight component, which is why I think you need a, a, a biennial budget. And you do have to address the entitlement component. And we ought not to be afraid of that. And we also ought not to be scaring people about it. So until that happens, we are not going to accomplish what you're asking. But in, if the committee, if seven of the 12 agree, then gets uh, put into legislation, goes to the House, goes to the Senate, uh, the Senate by 51 votes uh, would pass it, and the House has to get 218. If that doesn't happen, then the sequestration comes in where you have the automatic cuts in the, of 1.4, 1.5 trillion that are already identified. That doesn't. That still doesn't solve the fundamental problem. 
So the House and the Senate both need to get to work on long-term regulatory, looking at the regulatory environment, looking at entitlements, and looking at the, uh, the, tax, uh, the tax code. And that really is what will solve this problem. And then the, the fourth component, obviously, is growth. We've got to get people back to work. We've got to have job growth. The, the, the GDP growth that we had in the first six months of the year is anemic at best. I mean, look, we, we had in the last three months in job creation, we had 117,000 jobs in July. In June, we had 54,000 new jobs, excuse me, 18,000. And in June, um, or in May, you had 54. So 54, 18, and 117. That, and, and by the way, the 54 in May, 30,000 of it was McDonald's. You remember when you heard that McDonald's was doing a higher 50,000? Well, in May, the 50, of the 54,000 jobs created in this country, 30,000 came from McDonald's. Now, nothing against McDonald's, but I think when we think of job creation, we would like to see you know $1,000 a week plus jobs being created. That's what we want to see. So it's, it's, it's a combination of, of creating an environment where small business owners can excel. They have predictability, and consumer confidence has to start to come back. Congressman, we're uh, past our time limit for tonight. Um, I know I usually stay around. You can maybe do some more questions with folks afterward, but I will wrap up and give everybody else the opportunity to go home if you're all set. Okay, well, I, first, let me just thank you all for coming. I'll stay for a few minutes if you want to chat uh, and if you didn't get your question answered. But I really do appreciate you. Thank you for coming out. Uh, I do very much want to hear from you. Uh, whether it's these events or you know, call me or send me an email. And uh, even if we disagree, so, you know, let me know. I, I want to hear from you. Uh, it's, it is important. And I think the most important thing we can do is make sure that we have an environment where we can all have a great conversation, figure out the best way I can represent you, and I'll do my best to do it. Thank you all very much for